Today, we are going to take a look at how we can create a really cool scene transition in our Phaser 3 game by using a bitmap mask. With just a few lines of code and by using the built-in game objects and events in Phaser 3, we can cre easily create a really nice effect like the one here. So to create this cool effect, we will need to go ahead and listen for our Phaser scene events to know when our scene is actually created. Once this happens, we'll go ahead and use our Phaser 3 tweens to go ahead and create a smooth uh, animation to have our ship sprite scale up and to go ahead and have our scene uh, fade in. Finally, we'll be using a bitmap mask to go ahead and use our game object to go ahead and create a mask to apply to our scene by using an overlay, so then that way only part of our scene is visible through this game object. So before we get started, there will be a link in the description of this video to the clear source code uh, for this example, as well as a link to the starting source code if you'd like to follow along. In the example here, we are using phaser version 3.80, and older versions of Phaser may work with this example, but it is recommended to be on at least this version number. Also, in order to use bitmap mask, you'll need to use Phaser WebGL game type when you configure your Phaser game. All right, so if you'd like to follow along, go ahead and grab the link to that starting source code, uh, download it, and open it inside your IDE of choice. All right, so before we start adding new code, we're going to quickly go over the starting code uh, example that's included. Uh, so inside the code base, uh, the main two files we want to take a look at is our index.html page. Uh, so this is the main uh, web page for our game. And so this just has a little bit of styling uh, added to the page, as well as it references our main.ts script. Uh, so in our main.ts file, this is the entry point for our web application. And basically all we're doing is we're creating a new Phaser 3 game instance. We're adding in our game configuration that we like to use for this example. And then we go ahead and create a basic scene. Uh, so there are some utility functions. We'll come back to those later. Uh, but mainly uh, in our main scene class here, we're just adding in some images for our background. We're loading in a sprite sheet so then that way we can use it to uh, create our bitmap mask that we'll do in a bit. And then finally, we go ahead and create our animations that we're using for our ship and we add it to our scene. Uh, so if you go ahead and run the code, uh, and there'll be instructions in the readme on how to set it up. Uh, you should see this in your web browser here. Uh, so we'll have this nice background with this animated ship on our scene. All right, so to get started, the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and create a bitmap mask. And what a bitmap mask is in Phaser is it is a type of display mask that allows us to use a game object to determine what should be visible in another game object. Uh, so what that means is for my scene here, if I want to create an effect where my ship game object is the area I want to be visible in my scene, I can create a bitmap mask from that game object. And what Phaser is going to do is it's going to use the pixels of that game object to determine what will be visible on the game object we apply our mask to. And so basically what we want to do in our scene is we want to go ahead and apply this shape to our scene so it could be our camera or another game object and then that way only those parts that we define here are actually visible and luckily this is actually really easy to do in phaser uh, so the first thing we have to do is we need to make sure we are in webgl mode for our game type so bitmap masks are only supported in webgl so if you do phaser.auto it should work uh, but it is recommended to specify webgl directly uh, if you want to use this uh, type of object or you'll need to handle in your code if you fall back to campus. So to go ahead and actually create a bitmap mask in our code, what we need to do is we just need to use the phaser bitmap mask uh, class. And for that class, we can go ahead and specify another game object that we want to use as our mask. And so what we're going to do is in our code, we're going to come to this create mask uh, method here. Currently, all the method's doing is it's just creating our basic sprite game object and it's playing an animation. Uh, so then that's why our ship is animated here in our scene. So then what we're going to go ahead and do is in this to do here, this is where we'll create our mask. So for our mask, we'll go ahead and make a new variable. We're going to call it mask. We're going to set it equal to a new phaser display mask. And we want to use a bitmap mask. So for this, we need to specify our scene. Uh, so for where this will be added, uh, so we'll use our current scene as reference. And then we're going to go ahead and pass in our sprite game object uh, for our ship. So then what we need to do is we need to actually go ahead and return this mask uh, in our code instead of our original sprite. So we're going to go ahead and update our return type. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this here and we're going to paste it here. So now that we've defined our mask, what we need to do is we need to apply it to another game object. And so we could do it to our camera, uh, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to create an overlay uh, for our scene and we're going to apply it to that. 
And the reason we're going to do that is with our overlay, it's going to allow us to create this nice transition where we have that overlay fade in and fade out, and then we don't have to modify our camera directly. And then that way our background, everything else in our camera will still be visible to uh, the player. And so to go ahead and do that, what we'll do is we're going to make a new variable. We're going to do const, we're going to call this overlay, and we're going to set equal to a new method. And so we'll do create overlay image. And so what we'll do is let's go ahead and create that new private method. And for this, we're going to return a phaser game objects graphics game, game object. And so for this, we'll go ahead and create a graphics game objects. We'll do const. We're going to do our overlay. We're going to set equal to our scene. And we'll go ahead and do add. And then we're going to do graphics. And then with our graphics, we're just going to go ahead and just draw a rectangle to create an overlay on our scene. Uh, so to do that, we can just do our overlay for our graphics game object. We're going to specify our fill style. And we're just going to go ahead and do black. So we'll do 0x, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And we'll do one for our alpha. And now we want to go ahead and call the fill rectangle uh, method to go ahead and create that rectangle. And so for our position, we want it in the top left hand corner because we want to take up our whole scene. And then we need our width and a height of our scene. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference two variables and we'll define them in one second. So we're just going to do width and we're going to do height. And then finally, we'll want to go ahead and return our overlay uh, so we have that. So for our width and height, what we can do is we can use our scale manager on our scene instance to grab those properties. And so we'll just do const, we're going to do our width, we'll do our height, we're going to set it equal to this.scale. All right, so now that we've created our overlay, uh, we can see now that our scene's actually black, and so we can see our overlay's working. And now what we want to do is we need to take our mask and apply it to our overlay. So what we need to do is in our create mask method here, we just need to set that to a variable, so do const mask. And now we're going to go ahead and do overlay, and we're going to call the set mask method to go ahead and apply that. And so we'll go ahead and apply our mask. All right, so once we make our change, it looks like nothing's actually happened in our game. And so what we need to do is for our mask image here, so our ship game object, we need to actually go ahead and make it invisible. Uh, so typically, whatever object we're using for our mask, we'll want to go ahead and hide that in our scene so that way it's not visible. So now once we do that, we can see something is happening. And what's happening is for our overlay, uh, that's taking up our whole scene here, so it should be black. And so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to comment out our set mask line here. And so we can see our overlay is applied to our scene. But once we call set mask, what happens is we're now using the bitmap mask that we've defined for the pixels of our sprite game objects or our ship. And that's what's visible out of that whole game object that we uh, had before. And so we can see our mask is working. And so what we actually want to do for our effect is we want to do the inverse of this. Uh, what we want to do is for our mask, we want to go ahead and hide what we normally show. So this part here for our ship, and we want to go ahead and reveal what's normally hidden. Uh, so it's this part here. And so really, we just want to go ahead and invert uh, our alpha that we're using uh, to determine what's visible for our mask. And to do this, all we need to do is reference a property on our mask. Uh, so we'll come down to our code. And we want to go ahead and do mask. We're going to use invert alpha. We're going to set that equal to true. And what that's going to do now is basically for our game object sprite, uh, our pixels that were visible before, those are going to be treated as the ones we want to go ahead and hide. And the ones that were not visible before, so everything else, those are the ones we would actually leave on our game object. And so now we can see that we can see our background through our overlay. So the last thing we want to do with our mask is now we just want to give it that really nice uh, transition. And so what we're going to want to do is when our scene starts, we're going to go ahead and scale up our game object for our mask. And then we'll have our overlay fade in. So it's this nice uh, transition here. And so that's where these two other functions that we have in our code uh, come into play. And so the first one here is this add scale up effect on scene start. What this does is we listen for our phaser scene events, the uh, create event, so we know when our scene's actually created. When that happens, we're going to go ahead and use a tween to go ahead and modify uh, the scaling property on the game objects we provide. And so if we provide our ship game object, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to go ahead and scale it uh, from 0 0.5. So it's going to be half as big as it was when we uh, created it. And we're going to scale it up to three, and so that way it expands outside our scene. 
And then so far our second function, what this one does is just gonna do a similar thing where we listen for a create event, but instead we're gonna go ahead and modify the alpha on the target game object. And so we're gonna go ahead and start with it fully visible and we're gonna go ahead and have it fade out by setting it to zero uh, once our transition completes. And we'll be using a tween uh, to create that effect. And so we want both these effects to happen uh, relatively in the same time. Uh, but we want to know when they're both completed. So then that way we can actually start our level if we were making a full game. And so to know that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use promise that all and wait for both of these promises to resolve. And they're going to resolve when our tween completes. So to go ahead and do this, what we'll do is we'll come down to our create method. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this to do here. We'll do promise, we'll do all. And so for our promises, we'll provide an array. And so we want to go ahead and do our add scale of effect on scene start. We're going to pass in this scene reference and then so for our game object we want to go ahead and reference our bitmap mask and so we're going to do our mask and we're going to do our bitmap mask and what that's going to do that's going to reference the underlying game object that makes up our mask and so it's going to reference this sprite game object here so our ship and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and type this as a phaser game objects dot game object and then for our second promise, we want to go ahead and do add fade in effect on scene start. And we're going to go ahead and do this for our scene. And now our target is going to be our overlay game object. All right, so now when we save, if we refresh our browser, we should see our scene now start. It should be black and we can see our ship. It scales up and we get this really cool effect here. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. So as a reminder, there is a link in the description of the video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send the links on your screen now.